Hello everybody, I like to walk you through a couple of different um, configuration scenarios of Tesla coils and also want to walk you through um, configuration via TMT. Tesla is a magnifying transmitter. There are configurations which have not been shown in that way. There are standard configurations which are applied everywhere. But I will look beyond that and will go through different combinations and what you can achieve with them. So to have a baseline let's start from scratch. Let's just tune the secondary. Here you see it's in a setup between the primary so that has not a big influence, only a marginal influence. I connect on the bottom line you see only the positive side of the function generator and have um, the oscilloscope on channel 1 just in the vicinity and if I set it up like that it's on 21214 megahertz goes in here as you can see if I go out of here it's completely gone so that's a good thing about the digital one it's much more precise so here you can see that has the highest rate 1.220 megahertz so now I take it to the next level, that means i going to uh, drive the primary. No, top load, nothing, still the secondary in place, so I would assume it should resonate at the same frequency, but there might be a small difference, so let's have a look. I have at that time, I have the oscilloscope directly connected, it might have a small influence as well. Let's have a look. So I'm here at the moment at one uh, one one nine nine. Go up. We had one two two zero. As you can see, I get a higher peak. I get the most peak here at one two four nine. Yeah, one two four nine, one two four nine. Um, mega hard. So slightly higher connected. Now I have connected it to Earth. And guess what? Our complete tuning is down the drain. So if you connect to Earth and you have adjusted your frequency according to your measurement for the secondary coil and that's your frequency you want to work with, forget about it. Once you're connected to Earth, it's all gone. Let's have a look. So, as you can see, 1.239, there's nothing. I have nothing connected anymore. There's no, no queue. So here it starts slowly. You see slowly at 969. So it goes up here and literally here around this mark that is max. So I have here at 718 yeah almost lost half of the frequency and the earth connection did slow down um, my frequency quite a lot. Let's have a look at how strong it is. So that's connected directly at the moment. So that says something about 285 volt. Okay, so far so good. We have no top load. Shall we add a top load? Let's see what that does. Having the top load not connected, I mean, it's nothing miraculous here. Um, you probably all know that. And sorry if I, if I bore you, but you will see later on, it's becoming quite interesting. So here, we go back to the same frequency. It's nothing, of course. I'm adding capacitance and resistance. And the logical consequence is the frequency is dropping again. Let's go back here. I think that's about it. 530 kilohertz. So 530 kilohertz. Here I have my peak again, and the voltage is around approximately the same for 10 volt. Well. Very important, 
the output here is high impedance and the voltage okay can be applied to 20 volt I will do that later on but it's high impedance that means there's almost no power on the output so that is now our current setup it's a standard configuration as you see we have a Tesla coil we have a primary we have a secondary we have earth connection to the back and we have a top load on the front and that's a traditional setup with bear in mind we have now 532 if you consider to transmit via a specific frequency to the ground do your measurements before you have to at least twice the frequency on the secondary in order to be just in the range of it but it becomes quite tricky you probably have to deal a little bit more I'm not sure if there's any calculation existing which, which gives you any value um, how much frequency is reduced when you connect to ground because that's a direct connection it is not a connection via a, um, a capacitor there is no coupling capacitor in between so that becomes a little bit difficult and can probably change from area to area based on your ground connection let's take it to the next level now that should be familiar to most of you who have watched my videos we have here a traditional non-crowned bipolar Tesla coil that means I have a balanced connection on both sides with the same impedance with the same capacitance as top loads and we have it all in the middle let's see put it here in the middle so now we'll see what's frequency what would you expect would happen with the frequency now that I removed earth and um, added a top load is it gonna stay if it goes gonna down or will it go the frequency up so those of you who think the frequency will go up you are right let's have a look so we go back to our uh, 530 we had I go up in the frequency and here you see at 800 that's quite nice the frequency up also the power level is a bit lower because now I'm radiating on both sides that means it's not on one side anymore and it's not grounded anymore so if I want to get the full power of the system I have to combine now both sides now that is now a very interesting combination and now let's move on to the interesting part that is the TMD setup I have now Add a couple of more components let's have a look what we have here yes that is a nice mid-size Tesla coil I did build and please dear coilers don't get too excited I'm not firing this one up this one is only was a one-off I did build for my son to show him how nice it is I have a couple of feet of sparks but the smell was tremendous we had a couple of days we couldn't get that smell out of the house anymore so now this one is very good for testing here I use the primary I have some special setup so I have also and hopefully it will not be too annoying I have um, a frequency modulation on um, the signal generator reason being is that you get an audible um, feeling of the tuning as well so what, what I'm going to do is I'm taking the input side uh, output side from both coils and go not not as traditionally to the secondary um, I go to the primary and also what I'm going to do is I use a capacitor so I have not a direct connection between I have a capacitor in between which helps me to tune for tuning I have channel 1 connected here loose around the secondary and I have channel 2 connected here to see the frequency and so on let's go and make some changes here so I have to go down in the frequency in order to get something it gets a bit noisy it's one kilohertz That's quite strong now. 
and I have also connected the neon here so this one is now purely illuminated from the signal generator let's go here to my capacitor hope you can hear that nicely when I tune you can see interesting when the load snaps in it drops in the frequency that means Q, Q is dropping as well not the frequency sorry Q is dropping So that is now the bottom of the secondary, which now is supposed to go to ground and illuminates quite nicely only from the signal generator. Let's see what kind of. So we have a lot of radiation here, quite a lot wherever I go. Literally, the whole, whole room is. radiating and yeah I have the amplitude set to 10% the amp depth is 10% otherwise it would be extremely noisy yeah. So that's interesting um, to use literally here a bipolar coil or a standard driving coil. The ratio between the driving coil and the secondary is not correct, just to let you know. It's just for me only a test. Notice the driving coil has to be a much stronger build. It actually has also to carry the current. And actually then the secondary, as a TMT, the, the magnifier here if you want carries an only the voltage so that will be on the load top load side would be a cable normally connected which goes to the bottom of the secondary I have now replaced the, the standard primary with a bifilar for the setup also used um, frequency modulation um, with a um, FM deviation of 1% so it's 1 kilohertz well, kilohertz um, frequency and modulation frequency so that gives you sound it's now um, tuned at 290 kilohertz and what you will see is the brightness of the fluorescent bulb it's much higher I have the uh, capacitor connected you see I can tune it here in it's much stronger and let's have a look here on the tuning side here's no story about that but it gives you now let me show you how that is reflected here on the fluorescent bulb So that is nice, bright. That is brighter, gone. Full, so. That is nice, full, bright. So that is much stronger output as it was on a standard coil. Here you can see that beautifully here on channel one, the driving side, perfect. And here, channel 2, the TMT. That's, that's how it's supposed to look like. So what I have done with the capacitor in between, I make the adjustment, which is a difference between the inductance of both systems, but choosing capacitors in between and to compensate for the gap of reactance here. 
and to align the mutual frequency with a much much stronger output using the bipolar Tesla coil and interesting is radiation level is very low that means it's a much better setup you see it, I have to go very closely Jelly, for much stronger output before it actually reacts which is ideal we, we don't want to have a radiator perfect let's go through here what we have here we have on channel 2 that's 315 volt let's on channel 1 that's the input side at 30 38 volt it's a factor of 8 a set is quite nice let's have a look if we find some other frequencies I think that was our perfect frequency. No, there's nothing coming close anymore. I think that's it. Let's tune back. But you can see here quite nicely so that I can tune in and out between primary driving side and secondary. My bulb is full illuminated and, and to compensate that, I can compensate that nicely here you can see that with the capacitor. Line set. Perfect. Okay start now with the standard setup of uh, a TMT where you have here the driving side just normal connected to ground and lower bit and the top side where the top led connected goes to the bottom side of the TMT part which is the secondary so that would be the normal setup and I have done here my first calibration of the system so my lowest connectivity is here is here on um, this part you see on channel 1 that is connected over to the TMT and channel 2 is here coming from the driving side if I, if I toggle over here to between channel 1 and channel 2 you see here on channel 2 I have 54 volt and on channel 1 it's 260 volt, 280 volt which is an improvement. Let's have a look about um, the magnetic field, the dielectric field it's quite weak here. See if I get, yeah here I get something so I give, it's here, yes it's here it is okay give me some indication now Okay, rather than going through this, um, the setup here, it's, it is at the moment set to sine wave. I will now exchange the primary here to the bifilar coil. And please note, the value is 275, 280 on secondary side and 70 volt here, 54 volt on the driving side. I have now connected the bifilar coil. Please note everything on a driving side like oscilloscope has not changed at all. Same frequency, no adaption. And you can see right away we have on channel 2 we have 75 volt and on channel 1 we have 384, 386 volt. Now let me change that now to uh, square wave. See that? So that's what you can expect when you pulse your system. This square uh, wave has a 50% duty cycle. That means 50% on, 50% off. So that gives you a good feeling about, uh, let's see, I can even go higher. 
let's have a look here so that gives me a tremendous amount of power boost for the same buck or some amount of energy I put in it's partially on the based on the properties of the coil but also the coupling is much stronger so again here channel 1 is now 584 volt and channel 2 is 90 100 volt I think that's 100% improvement